and we're back to paint some more loose watercolor flowers. These are all the pictures that I've taken over summer and spring here in Canada, and I have such a huge collection. So I want to give you access to this collection. All you have to do is go to JacquelineJacks.com and we can give you a passcode to go and use any of this beautiful photography that I have uh, taken. And of course, everyone taking my classes gets access to this file too. It's pretty cool, right? I mean, there's so many beautiful flowers to do. We're going to do a lot of these actually, a um, little crash course on some loose florals using your brushes and just kind of doing some fun things right here, right now. But there's actually a series here on uh, YouTube that you can follow and we're going to try and do a lot of different shapes and kind of keep you guys out of trouble and hopefully encourage you to paint more loose flowers. Some of the beautiful flowers that we're going to attempt to paint in this series are also in the file. So if you want to look at them for reference, then you might really enjoy looking through them. I'm going to cover all of these on YouTube. So please don't forget to subscribe. And if you love to paint loose flowers or you're kind of in a, a rut where you're just not painting right, there's so, look how pretty that is. There's so many um, to get inspired by. And so I thought I'd do this really cool floral series before we move on to urban painting. I love this one. All right, let's get started, shall we? So for those of you who are really lost and don't even know about paint either, I have a wide range of paints that I always like to work with. And I really suggest that you take large sheets of watercolor paper and make these big, big beautiful swatches with the line through them so that you can see the transparency of your colors and really just get used to your colors. This will help you so much because if you don't really know and you're not familiar with the colors that you have or how to use them or how they work together, then you really can get so lost, you know, when you actually start to paint these things. Um, we're going to keep it pretty simple though for you guys today. And of course there is a floral course. If you want to learn how to do big compositions, um, like this one that I did or any of my, uh, floral compositions, you know, that I often show on social media, you can always, um, take the full course and that would be a way for you to be able to learn how to do things from start to finish. I also go over brushes and paper and just so many things, so many details, backgrounds, um, you know, and even color mixing in that course. And that is just one course with a bunch of different floral compositions in it that are really, really cool to do. All right. So now, um, as far as colors, well, right now, I use a lot of Daniel Smith. I use Schmincke and I use uh, Sennelier. And I found that, and, and there's a couple that I use by Winsor Newton, but Winsor Newton dries out very, very quickly. So I tend not to get anything else but indigo. Um, Sennelier is a beautiful, beautiful watercolor with uh, a, a honey component to it. So it does stay wet and it re-wets really, really nicely. I love, love Sennelier. And anytime I can get it, I always get it. Schmincke, same thing. Made in Germany. It is a gorgeous, juicy watercolor. I love it. Re-wets. It travels. It's just, just so good. And both of these have a decent selection. So anytime you can get these, I actually love these. They're wonderful, but sometimes they can be a little harder to get your hands on. Danielle Smith is a little more accessible, I think, to most people. It's great watercolor. They're made really well. Um, some of the colors are a little more harder to re-wet than others, but for the most part, you can't go wrong with these either. These are the top of the line uh, watercolors. Other color companies like uh, Mission Gold. Mission Gold's okay, but Mission Gold is a great starter kit. The Pure Pigment Set, it has gone up in price. And I feel like you could easily probably find some great deals on Daniel Smith before uh, Mission Gold, and you would be kind of existing on the top of the line right away. Um, 
who else? White Knights is also a really great starter set for you if, if White Knights is accessible to you. Those are really great paints too. There's also um, tubes over pans. I prefer tubes because I do a lot of abstract work and a lot of colors. A lot of times pans just don't give you that that definition and that character that you need from um, actual wet you know fresh paint and I, I really like to squeeze the amounts in and mix my own colors and that's much harder to do when you're using um, pans right so it just gives me I feel like a lot more paint to create all these different variations um, for instance like the granular variations I create um, I'm always mixing my own just because I, I don't really get enough from the pre made granulated colors uh, like the ones that Schmincke has out and you know I just prefer to mix my own you know and they're really really fun to do so that I use uh, two paints in order to do so anyway these are all great great colors to use but what I do suggest and the reason why I brought up color is because this is just a tiny little intro on color but if you don't choose three colors that you're gonna use and mix all of your own colors from those basic three then you really will find it to be a struggle as a beginner so I highly suggest you choose one yellow one blue and one red or pink and try and mix them together and see what comes of it and if you find they're getting a little too muddy then either go all warms or all cools and switch up the colors great examples of this are like Sennelier bright red mixed with Hansa yellow or cad yellow you can see how it stays really clean when it mixes together upper pink makes a great brightener and keeps things very clean um Sennelier french ultra beautiful color mixed with um schminka cad yellow or any cad yellow or lemon yellow very very beautiful green that you're going to get so by by getting to know your colors you know then you can keep out of the muddy zone and I think that that's the whole point a lot of you guys have uh, said that sometimes the colors get a little muddy maybe go you know this route more olivey and then before you know it you're in the brown section I keep all the colors clean just by really doing these mixing cards and knowing what I'm gonna get you know for instance I know I'm gonna get this more gray muted tone if I'm using indigo and bright red but I can take my bright red and I can mix it with something else and get a really, really beautiful, bright, uh, bright orange without that, right? But if I were to add the indigo in, it would make this kind of more muddy color. Instead, I would probably choose a cerulean and mix a cerulean in or maybe a cobalt. And by mixing the cerulean in, you're going to get a much brighter brighter beautiful tone because cerulean is really bright so it's just really like you'll get to know this don't don't be impatient with yourself be patient with yourself and I think the whole point is just to get familiar with your colors and play with them as much as possible I love to do that it's like one of my favorite things to do okay so let's look at some of these um some of these that we can play with and let's choose something kind of simple for you guys there's lots of simple ones here actually we're just gonna have fun <laughs> just have fun um why don't we just start with this one because this is a nice simple like flat on um structure to do and i think for this one i'm gonna go ahead and just use one of these brushes this is a round it's a long round size 12 by princeton elite princeton aqua elite uh, so I got it wet and I have one, two, three waters, one for my uh, warms, one for my cools, like to handle my blues and greens and one just to clean the brush off every time. I have some paper here I'm doing this one on uh, Canson XL, which is just a very inexpensive paper. I get really, really big books of it and keep it on hand. Let me get it for you so that I can just kind of um, cut them up into sheets as I'm teaching these classes. And this is the Canson XL, it's very, very simple. I mean, this, it's not even 100% watercolor. And I wanted to show you this on cheaper paper because I know a lot of you guys are gonna be just doing things on um, inexpensive paper at first as you practice. So we're gonna kind of play with some pink ranges here. I have some already mixed over here, but 
uh, let's just go ahead and get straight color. So to make it simple, I'm going to use a violet in the center and just on dry paper, wet brush. Let's kind of just make sure I mix my color out. I'm going to just give a center just like that. I started all the way on the edge, but it's okay. Uh, if you wanted to add a little more color to it, then we can go back and add. But for right now, I'm just kind of keeping it like this. Then we're going to take this and on the outside of this, um, like by leaving a little bit of white in, in between the center and where the petal starts, I'm just going to drop my brush and I'm just going to kind of rub it like this to create a pencil, a, uh, a petal shape. Now the outside of the petal, it's so nice, right? We're going to leave that because it's beautiful. It looks lovely that way. Grab a little more color on my brush and I'm going to do it again. And there's another petal and again. Woo. Now you can go as light as you want and let it dry and do more petals over it or you can go as dark as you want. There's so many options, right? But this is just a very simple way to do this flower. Let me get these extra brushes out of here. Don't need them. And again, this is on dry paper. The reason why is I want to maintain the integrity of the flower. This is so much fun to do. Uh, this paintbrush makes this really easy, actually, because this paintbrush does not hold a ton of water. It would be a much different effect. I probably wouldn't get this, uh, this deepness here, you know. Now, on some of these areas where it's not as dark, let's just go ahead and draw some lines out. Isn't that pretty? And just tap a little bit. Just loosely giving it some structure because it's not hugely wet. If it were very, very sopping wet, and this is why I'm not using like my Ultimo um, brush, because if it were sopping wet, I could never go back in and do this right now. These are actually almost dry. And that's going to be the key to not getting a really soppy looking uh, presentation. Okay, again, keep it simple with the same color just dip our brush in and we're just gonna come out like this with some little streaky lines now another way to do this is say you have a point on the end of one of your brushes you can just if you really want it really little lines you can actually use the tip of your brush look at that isn't that great I'm just striking them out, kind of lightly scoring it. You know, you can score deeply into the paper. So it doesn't matter at this point because this is really where we're going to lie, right? But I'm just creating all this nice texture to join my flower. Isn't that pretty? Now, this is just monochromatic today, right? I don't even know that we're going to even do more than one color per flower just to keep it simple. But, well, I don't know. Like, Let's see what happens. Maybe we should add another color. You know why? Because then I'll teach you how to deal with another color this way. So rinsing out my brush, getting a little piece of paper here. Uh, we're gonna have to speed dry it just a little bit. So I'm just gonna crumple this up and dry the center up a little bit. God, this is so pretty. I love the way it looks. Um, so with our lavender, let's add a little bit of opera rose or opera pink and I'm just gonna kind of lay some of it just like that and I'm just ever so slightly bumping it now this again is a brush that doesn't hold a ton of water and that's why it's not gonna make a soppy mess if you had a brush that held a lot of water you would have a lot going on here. You know what I mean? Um, so 
we did that. What else can we do to this? We can actually go a little bit darker in the center. And if I were going to add a little dark to the center, I would take, you know, maybe depending on the size of your flower. This is another Princeton round size two. This is Aqua Elite. Again, it doesn't hold a ton of water uh, just for this application. And in the center, I think I'll probably, I mean, a really nice one would be Cerulean. So let's just get, grab a little Cerulean. And I'm going to go ahead and add some Cerulean in here. This is where it really helps to know what happens to your colors when they mix together. Because this is still very wet. I'm not waiting for it to dry and I'm just going back in and just blooping in a bunch of cerulean. So if my paper was too wet, if this was too wet, if my brush was too wet, this would totally not work. And I kind of like just gonna this is way more time than I wanted to spend on any one flower, but you know what? We'll just go with it. So you're going to get all kinds of these kinds of projects in the flower tutorial. You could, should come and take the flower class. I think you'll really love it. It's here on YouTube. I do as many of these as I can, but if you want more in-depth, like full pieces and not just, you know, a flower, then um, now I'm getting creative. We could have just left it at so many stages right now, but I couldn't help myself. All right, I'm going to stop right now because now I'm fiddling <laughs> and I want to do more. <laughs> yeah, I really like this. I'm, I'm a Cerulean person, so I really love pulling this through. Um, but again, you, you could see this could have stopped like so many times. It did not need to go this far. You could have just stopped at monochromatic work, but this is a really nice little light brush that does not hold a lot of water. There are a lot of these out there. It's just a very small um, brush. You can even use a very cheap one for this particular application or your striper brush, but anything with a fine point will do that doesn't have a ton of water and it's concentrated. Okay, so there's our first flower, guys. Take a look. Isn't it beautiful? So pretty. We've got like uh, these beautiful watercolor edges. I don't know if my paper is too bright, but you can kind of see it. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the way that turned out. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's see what else we're gonna do here. Um, this is an interesting one to do. Let's try this one next, shall we? All right, so for this, I think um, I'm going to use, Ooh, this is kind of fun. Let's use one of these brushes, a fan brush for this. So I'm going to get the fan brush wet. We're going to get some um, probably phalo, maybe phalo green or could use phalo green. That might be nice. Let's dip my brush in. Probably use phthalo green and some turquoise. So I now have phthalo green on my brush. I'm going to start with this end of the brush, right? And just kind of dab some little areas for the base of the flower. And then I'm going to take this and just draw out. You're like, okay, that doesn't look like that. Well, guess what? It will hang on. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we're going to take a little spray bottle and so random and so crazy. Then we got this, which is a little bit of paper towel. And depending on, this is where not having 100% cotton really does make kind of a mess. Because if this were 100% cotton paper, it would really turn out differently. <laughs> but it's still going to turn out good. Okay, there we go. Look at that. It's crazy, right? You're like, what? 
Um, I'm going to add, just for fun, a little bit of my favorite cobalt turquoise into the base of the flower. Just get a little heavy thing going here. And of course, like I said, this is not like the best watercolor paper. Really good paper will do different things, but this is still really fun. It's a nice, beautiful, loose flower. Look at that. And just by kind of smudging it, or you can take a, um, a quill. This one is a size four. Get it wet. If this were 100% cotton paper, this would not be puddling like this. And I'm just going to kind of move this around. Now, I find that the least that I fiddle with things, the better off they turn out to be. Like, I love randomness when I'm doing um, things like this. I think randomness is really fun. So I'm just kind of shaping out the shadow of a flower right here, just with a little bit of extra. This, this really, really has to dry. So because it has to dry, I'm going to take um, this little brush and just give you a stem base in probably that purple that we were messing with before. And I'm not going to touch, I'm going to leave some white in between because it's not dry. And why not? I think it looks kind of neat and more, more random. There we go. Okay, leaving that. We'll let that dry. Here you go. That's flower number two. Bet you thought that was going to be a lot harder, right? I mean, these beautiful flowers are a lot easier than you think as long as you just kind of take the glass, right, and know how to do them. All right, let's let this dry, and we'll come back to it. Let's do another one. Um, What's going to be our next one? How about this one? I think you guys will like to do this one. So this is a monochromatic, pretty much. We're going to just use some really beautiful blue um and i think i'm gonna try let's try a very juicy round brush this is the neptune round and just for fun i'm gonna try the escoda ultima which is one of my favorite brushes i'm gonna get it nice and wet just to see what happens i want to see how the petals shape one against the other this i love to do stuff <laughs> I love to do crazy things like that all the time. Um, and what color to use? Why don't we use French Ultra? That's always a beautiful color. You could use indigo. You can use any color you want. So I'm getting a bunch of color loading up my brush here and getting enough water. definitely need one thing about these brushes when you're using these really big brushes they need a lot more color um, just start in the center somewhere that's cool I like how random that is there we go and you got a nice brush gonna leave a little white space in between the center and the outside petal just because we don't want to have to wait for everything to dry. And I'm going to brush this out. Look at that. Lovely. And this isn't even like great paper, right? Now I try, like I said, I try to let the brush do the work and not really mess with them um, because I don't like a lot of messiness like a lot of movement going on but at the same time it's all good so i'm going to try my ultimo no it certainly is going to wet my paint out that's for sure um okay let's go probably while this dries let's do the other side I'm curious what this one does oh look at that it's so so much water and so wet that it's really, you have to use a lot of paint, but you could, that, that is the beauty of an expensive brush right there. My favorite brush. 
Oh, why don't I just use this all the time? I literally could use this Escoda Ultimo for size 14 for everything. I mean, like, it doesn't matter. I could use it, use it for everything, right? I'm putting away my Neptune because this just, I just want to use this for everything. I love this brush. Um, now, I can't overlap this until it dries because you're not going to get this line if you go over um so what i probably have to do is i'm just gonna create maybe here if we just dry this little bit off then i can try and get a line for you guys so it's basically gonna go like this There you go. Look how, this, look at how good it delivers. I actually want to do this one over again, but it just delivers water so well. I'm going to take some water out. I mean, I can just do this whole flower with this one brush. This is crazy. I don't even know that I would need to add any more water to this one. Because look at that. It just blooms with water. You're going to all be asking me about this brush now. You're going to be like, where is it? It's incredible. I actually got this um, on Amazon. I I was first introduced to this Escoda brush because I got a great pack as a gift. And it was David Taylor, the David Taylor series. Uh, this is an Ultimo Escoda, which is really beautiful and blue. And I loved these brushes so much that um, I wanted to try other sizes. So I ended up with this one. Okay. Let's see. Oh, this is so nice. So I don't, so that you guys can see it. And... Now, if I were to wait for this to dry, it would be, um, it would be kind of cool because I would be able to create this line here, right? But I mean, it's kind of, we're kind of getting a line here, going back in just to kind of exaggerate it a bit in hopes that you'll see something. All right. Now, um, this is where color mixing really comes in handy. So if you add, if we're going to do like some hot pink or maybe some red, let's use the Sennelier red, bright red. I'm going to load a brush that doesn't have a ton of water on it because this is not dry yet. And I'm going to add some dots to the center. Just to kind of get it started. And strike them out. Now, um, again, this is not entirely dry, but we're not going to sit here and wait 20, 30 minutes for it to dry before I can do this next spot. And I can't really stop my film, so we're just going to do what we can with it. Basically, I'm putting a dot and drawing a tiny little line. Now, again, remember, you could just put the dots in and then use the back of your brush or um, a twig or, you know, a scoring tool, whatever, to draw these wis more wispy lines out if you wanted to. And if you want more of a center, then just wet your brush and mix them together. And you'll have more of a center there of a different color isn't it great yeah I know look at it. it's still juicy it's still so wet but I love that it's gonna make like the coolest thing right there now this is something that once it dries you could go over and glaze it again you know even glaze it with another color would be really cool like a little bit um more but I'll one thing I love about French Ultra is it has a lot of texture to it and so it's gonna give you this beautiful um it's just like a gorgeous granulation within it 
and this to me is just so pretty. I I really love what it's doing. It's like I want to I want to glaze and just do some more things, but the Ultimo just you know, the right brush. It seriously it just takes over and you have like a perfect flower. I love it. Okay. Um so that is this session. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Let's go and see what we did as a review. We did these three flowers today. And I hope you guys will subscribe and come back tomorrow so that we can do some more great flowers. I have so many to show you. And again, if you want to do full pieces, you want to learn backgrounds and all about the paper and how to do compositions and things, please come over to JacquelineJacks.com and take my class. All right. Good to see you guys. Happy painting. Enjoy.